Okay, so in this video, we want to go over a basic fact about series, which is the following theorem. If a series converges, then automatically the individual terms of the series must approach zero as n tends to infinity. And let's look at why this is a very intuitive result. When we say that a series converges, this is a fancy way of saying that it is possible to add these infinitely many real numbers and the result of this infinite sum returns some other real number. So it is possible to add these infinitely many real numbers. Now if you use your intuition, the only way for us to possibly add infinitely many real numbers and in the end obtaining some other real number is that the terms we're summing have to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, how small? Well, if you add, say, 1 forever, so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 forever, of course this will be equal to infinity. If you add, say, 1 half forever, this will still be equal to infinity. But if you add, say, 1 over 10 forever, the result will, of course, also be infinity. So it doesn't really matter how small we go. We could add 1 over 100 forever or 1 over a billion forever. If we add constantly a number that is fixed, then the result will blow up to infinity. So it only seems possible, therefore, that we can add infinitely many terms unless the terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. How small? Well, they have to be getting smaller and smaller. They have to be shrinking to zero. Anything but zero, the numbers are a little too big, and the result of the series will be infinity. So a very intuitive result. To summarize again, we can only add infinitely many real numbers if they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller if they shrink to zero as n tends to infinity. Now we can look at the so-called divergence theorem, which is a simple consequence of this result, which is also can be called the contrapositive. If we negate both statements and invert them, so if the terms that we're summing over do not shrink to zero as n tends to infinity, then they are too big, and so the corresponding series diverges. And again, this is as intuitive as the original result. If the terms don't approach zero as n tends to infinity, then they are too big, and so it is impossible to add infinitely many terms and obtain a real number if the terms are simply too large. So the series will diverge. Now a word of caution. What if the terms we're summing over do shrink to zero? Is it enough to guarantee convergence? And the answer is no. And to prove this, let's consider two simple examples. The first one the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So this is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 and so on. Now this is not, not obvious right now but we will prove later on that this series actually blows up to infinity. So if you keep adding the reciprocal of the positive integers forever the sum will grow out of bounds and in the limit blow up to infinity. Let's now look at a similar sum, but now summing the reciprocals of the squares. So we get 1 over 1, which is 1, plus 1 over 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 over 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 over 4 squared, which is 16, plus 1 over 5 squared, 25, and so on. And in this case, the infinite sum, and again this is not a trivial result, but in this case this infinite series will converge and surprisingly it converges to exactly pi squared over 6. 
Now the fact that this is the exact value that this series converges to, this is not a trivial result. But we will also prove, just as in the first series, that later on this series also does converge. But the point here is that in both cases, the individual terms that we are summing both shrink to zero. If you look at the individual terms of the first series, of course as n tends to infinity, 1 over n does shrink to zero. And of course as n tends to infinity, 1 over n squared also shrinks to zero. So in both cases, we are summing positive terms, and in both cases, the individual terms that we're summing are approaching zero. As we sum more and more terms, the individual terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And yet, in the first case, the series diverges. In the second case, the series converges. So the idea here is that even though the individual terms may shrink to zero, it's not enough to guarantee convergence. They have to shrink to zero quickly enough. And if you look, the terms here are much smaller than the terms in the first series. One quarter is a half of one half. One over nine is a third of one third. One over sixteen is a quarter of one quarter. One over twenty-five is a fifth of one over five. So the terms here are getting smaller much faster than the terms in the first series. And because these terms shrink to zero quickly enough, the series converges. Because these terms do not shrink to zero quickly enough, the series diverges. And so for these cases, when the terms do shrink to zero, we will develop a variety of tests that will measure in most cases whether or not the individual terms that we're trying to add shrink to zero quickly enough or not quickly enough. If the terms go to zero too slowly, the series will diverge. If the terms go to zero quickly enough, the series will converge. So, to summarize, let's, re, uh, let's go over one more time the intuition. If a series converges, we can add these infinitely many terms, so they have to be getting smaller and smaller, they have to shrink to zero as n tends to infinity. The consequence of this, of course, is that if the terms that we're trying to sum don't go to zero as n tends to infinity, then they are too large, and so it is impossible to add these infinitely many terms, and so the series diverges. And a word of caution, if the individual terms go to zero, we cannot conclude convergence. If the terms go to zero too slowly, the series may still diverge. But if the terms go to zero quickly enough, the series can possibly converge. And again, in these more interesting cases, when the terms do shrink to zero, we will develop a variety of tests to measure if the terms shrink to zero quickly enough, therefore giving us convergence of the series, or if the terms go to zero too slowly and giving divergence of the series. And that's it.